and thank you everyone for coming. Uh, in this talk, I'd like to add to the discussion on how GCC and the GNU toolchain in general can most effectively interact with other compilers. In particular, how to repurpose the GCC test suite to validate other compilers and by extension, LLVM. We have used LLVM in, as the test compiler in this project, but any other compiler like Comsert could also be tested. This project came about while we were working on a 16-bit word address deeply embedded Harvard architecture, which was very similar to another official LLVM architecture. However, it rapidly became apparent that the LLVM test suites were not quite comprehensive enough for this project. LLVM has two test suites. The first would be the regression testing, which focuses on checking the AR, IR produced. But while this is okay by itself, you kind of want a bit more when you're testing a tool chain. You might want some, say, execution tests. That's where the second test suite comes in. But for LLVM, it requires an application and an operating system. So for a deeply embedded system, it's not quite applicable. This is where GCC test suite is so good because it has such a huge repository of knowledge that it can be used to become the authoritative testing reference that all other compilers you compare against including LLVM. So it also has a couple different test suites, one of which is the C compile time tests, which are like 30 years old, and that makes them very comprehensive for the front end testing. Now, C GCC also has an execute test suite, which is brilliant for testing backends but it can also be used to test things like the debugger or the libraries, or if you are using a implemented simulator model, it can also test that. So I really want the GCC test suite to be the industrial benchmark for execution testing. And for this, we have a couple of criteria. The first is to mark all unsupported or XFail features, but at the same time, we don't want to accidentally mark a couple of supported features as unsupported and then lose those tests. We also really don't want to mess with what's already there, so we don't want to alter any tier one language and it needs to be compiler agnostic as said previously so this talk follows on from jeremy bennett and simon cook's talks presented in 2015 and 2018 respectively in his talk jeremy discussed a method to blacklist all the c test files containing unsupported tests, but this method was rejected since it broke the second criteria. If a, comp if a file contained just one unsupported test, then it would have been blacklisted even if there were multiple passing and usable tests. So instead we came up with the method of doing feature tests. So instead of testing for a compiler, we test for a feature. How this comes into it is we look for this feature by creating a simple, very minimum test of this feature and then adding a little handler to each file that that feature is expected in. So how do we do this? Well, let's start with VLA6.c. Uh, this test file 
uh, contains or requires variable length arrays in structures, which is not a feature that is supported by L LLVM. So it's a prime candidate for this. Here are the results for LLVM, 12 unexpected failures. Not that great. So to add this new feature test, we start in the Deja GNU libraries in target support.exp. We need to create a function that returns one if the, if the compiler supports the variable length arrays in, structure, in structures or zero if it doesn't. So the function's name will relate to how we define which C test files include this feature. We use the function prototype check effective target followed by the specialized function name, in this case, BLA instruct. This function will then link to the C test file VLA-6 via DG require effective target VLA instruct, as you can see in the blue box. So next, we use the function to check no compiler messages. This function will run the test and, and check if th there are any compiler messages. If there are compiler messages, then the test fails and the feature is unsupported. The first input is the string that's used as a comment during debugging. The second variable defines what type of test it is. It can be an assembly test or an execution test or an object test. We now need a test. And as I said earlier, the test must be the minimum feature that the compiler can support. So in this case, we use this very short test. Finally, we add the DG require effective target VLA instruct to the top of VLA-6, so the second line here. We can do the same for other C files that also require the VLA length arrays and structure. The new results are here. The previously failing tests are now being marked unsupported, which is what we want. So another example of adding a feature test that gets a little bit more difficult is adding one for a specific flag. Now for this, it would be, we could do a feature test just the same as we did previously, uh, where we have a, each test will belong to a different flag, but then that gets kind of hairy and there's so many tests. So instead, let's do one function for all the flags. And for the example, we will be using this file, pr87929.c. As you can see in the DG options, it's got three flags, which will be run alongside this test. And one of them is F signaling NANs, which is somewhat supported by LLVM. If you run a file with LLVM and F signaling NANs, you'll get a warning message. So that would break this test because it's not looking for warnings. So as you can see, the test is broken. Uh, you've got one failure. As before, we start in target supports.exp. We create the function is effective target flag. Now, this will be used similarly to how we used the check effective, uh, check effective target in the previous uh, example. So we also have check no compiler messages as before. Also testing a short 
int main function. And arg is used, well, arg zero is used as the flag. So uh, as you can see, dollar sign args, arg is the flags that will be run, that main will be run under. The big difference between this target support function and one we saw previously is the selected. Now that's used by the function in this file, target supports dash dg dot exp. Now this function will verify the number of arguments, make sure that we're getting what is expected. Now there's no point in skipping a test if it's already being skipped, so it checks for that as well. And then it takes in the selector and the verbose part of target supports.exp function. Just to check that, yeah, okay, we are meant to be skipping it and that the test has failed. And then it fails, or well, skips rather. So here we have the final step, adding the DG require effective target flag to the file with the F signaling NANDs. And then the results become unsupported. So what about removing common flags? So here we have gcc-dg, which is another GNU library uh, file. And here we can see a list of flags which each C file will be run under. So VLA-6 will be run with O0 and then run again with O1, then O2, so on and so forth. And that's fine until you realize, okay, not every flag listed here is supported by LLVM. So we've quickly added the check effective target LLVM, which breaks the fourth criteria it checks for LLVM, that's not quite agnostic, is it? So, okay, we need to mess around with this a bit more, but it gets the job done for now. The, the current results for GCC, no change, which is what we want. We haven't messed anything up. For LLVM, there is actually a big change. More passes, fewer failures, and a lot more unsupported tests, which we do expect. So as for future plans, we really want to be able to run this GCC test suite right out of the box for any other compiler. And for that, we need to do quite a bit more work. We need no more unresolved tests or unexpected fails or even unexpected passes. But we are going to expect having more unsupported tests and fewer passes than what we would be getting if we were testing just purely GCC. And our final future plan is to upstream the project. Now, I think I'm getting to the point where it seems like the right time for me to start doing a couple of little pull requests with a couple of little changes. But I want to know if we're on the right track. Like, is this the right strategy and is this the right time for upstreaming? So I'm going to do a little poll. See if it works. Start poll.
David. I think we should have a poll up. I'll leave that up for now. And finally, I'd like to leave with another discussion. Uh, we've run into a couple of problems with variants in error messages. So there are some tests which look for a certain error or warning message, and because LLVM is different to GCC, they end up being different messages, and so the tests fail. Now, one way we could fix this, which okay, might be the right way, uh, is to add every possible warning or error message for that file. Alternatively, we could just find a meaningful substring and use a amalgamation of both GCC and LLVM uh, messages. Or perhaps there might be a better way that you know of. But please feel free to discuss with me now. And thank you for listening and for voting if it's worth Ma Ma Mary, if you go back to your previous slide, you can do end poll and we'll see what the answer was. Let's see. How do I do end poll? Wherever you started the polling from, you can do end poll, I think. Put on your plus button on the left. Uh, let's see, start a poll. Nope. Get some Did you get some poll results? Uh, not yet. So I have no technology. <laughs> Your polling options have come back up again. And I've clicked again. And you should have an option to end the poll after a bit. And then it tells you. While you're just waiting for that to try a second down the poll, um, um, you've got a couple of comments and questions from Nick Alcock and uh, Joseph Myers there. And um, uh, Sega Bosenkul. I'm uh, sorry for saying I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Also wishes to ask you a question. So go ahead, Sega, as well. Hi. Uh, uh, so, so, so I answer B for the poll. Uh, uh, you, uh, you, uh, uh, in, in my opinion, you should not try to upstream this project. You should upstream single patches to solve single problems, to make uh, single things more generic than they are now. Uh, those, those will be accepted easily uh, and will actually improve things uh, while trying to upstream everything will well it, 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 uh, uh, it might not end well uh, uh, and it's uh, it won't be easy for anyone it will, will be very frustrating for everyone so please don't please just send single things okay thank you do it a little bit, okay? Um, so, um, um, okay, so there's some useful comments here from uh, Nick Alcock has got an optimization suggestion. Um, I'm not sure, can you see those things, which is to, rather than testing for individual options, why not scan all the options that are used by all the tests once at the beginning and see which are available and then you can automatically trigger only for available options um, in there, which will be a lot faster and simpler. And with me, you don't have to change all the tests. And Joseph is giving you some feedback on the examples you uh, use. Um, and I think this is a good example of why actually probably submitting individual changes at the time will get you the level of detailed feedback you need. Uh, but it's also helpful because it does mean we're reviewing those tests. And some of the things in tests 
are there for historical reasons and maybe don't apply. So it may just not be making the test more generic, but you may be cleaning up um, tests. Okay, and I suspect that may mean that you end up cleaning up tests. Um, certainly, the example of uh, not an an actually doesn't seem to actually be a problem. More in the case of the last example you gave of variant messaging. Okay, thank you. Uh, any more questions and comments? Uh, Jeff Law, you'd like to raise uh, You'd like to ask a question. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um, first, I, I'm glad to see somebody tackling this problem. Um, it, it's something that, that it is of professional interest to me now, <laughs> uh, whereas it wasn't before. Um, the, the, the comments I would have is it looks like you've, you've kind of built something that works reasonably well for the the historical C torture suite, the compile execute tests that, that are from C torture. And it almost seems like that suite is, is probably easiest to move and migrate. And in, in some ways, you want it to be kind of independent of the compiler um, and have a way of flagging these tests use VLAs or this test set of tests uses uh, nested functions, which are often not supported. Um, and I think that's all great stuff, and it, and it would mean a change in how the GCC developers add tests to that test suite. It means they have to start thinking about how is this going to work in another compiler suite, which is fine. There's, there's nothing inherently bad or wrong with that. Um, what I think is is the really tough nut to crack is, as you say, the diagnostics, because those are going to be different, and I doubt we're going to get those two projects to converge on diagnostic messages. Two, um, a lot of the tests over the last uh, you know, 10 or 15 years have moved into the, the, uh, the Tree SSA DG framework, which is testing the IR. Um, and, and there's value to that. Have you guys thought at all about how to start looking at that problem? Because it's, it's big and nasty. We haven't thought that much about it at the moment. We're carrying on with focusing on the execute and compile side of it. Uh, Jeremy, you look like you want to say something. I was going to say, if you if you go back to your second slide, the one where you showed the different test suites, I think that sort of, it's a very good question, Jeff, but I think the, the, the um, I've now probably caused more trouble than it's worth. That's it, this one here. Actually, to some extent, so I think generically there's a question there, and it is a good question. I think for LLVM in particular, perhaps that's less of a worry because what LLVM does have is a very comprehensive test down to the IR level, the LLVM integrated tester, and that's about 46,000 tests. Um, so I think the real driver for us was the lack of LLVM tests for small embedded systems. The, the LLVM test suite is great, but it's really a set of applications to run on a big system under an operating system. Um, but um, uh, I, um, for a uh, so I think um, for deeply embedded systems, the, G, the GCC regression test and actually the GDB regression test can be used for this as well. They're quite a good way of exercising embedded systems. So that, but it's it's a good question, Jeff. Of can you get more generic in that set of tests as well? Yeah, it sounds like you guys are are. Looking at a slightly different problem, it, you know, the, the, the IR tests and, and maybe where I'm looking to go are probably out of scope for you guys. And, and part of what I'm thinking about is uh, how do we verify vectorization, for example, is occurring in both tool chains? Um, that kind of problem. And I don't have a solution for it, just to be blunt. Um, but that's the kind of thing I'm starting to think about is how do we verify performance across two different tool chains? I'm, I'm in a, a, an organization now where we are a multi color multi-compiler company and we want both tool chains to uh, perform well and we want to test for it and we and we don't want to essentially be writing tests in both irs <laughs> uh, so again probably out of scope for what you guys were tackling um but it is something that, that i am starting to think about and i'd be very curious to see how is is there something we can learn from what you guys are doing uh to take us in the direction we need to be going as well that's that's a uh, it, it's a good question i think the one thing i think we've taken away from this is Test for features, not compilers. And yeah. The discussion here and actually understanding what exactly 
each the features are on each each test um, mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. is 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 good. Um, uh, it's a good thing. I see Joseph, you've raised a question. Um, you have a related question, so this is for anyone to answer. Um, any thoughts of using the glibc test to test other libc implementations? And that is a very good question because I think glibc has by far the biggest set of C library tests out there, and that's a, a very good a good point. Um, and what are the challenges, for example, of trying to use it to test new lib, which is a much simpler C library? How do you, how do you deal with that? Hmm. Joseph, do you have any particular, uh, have, you, have you got any answers in working? 